the green flag waves at the back. It's going to be lights out very, very shortly, and we are going to be go here in Assen. Great start from proposition for Pekka Magnaia. Likewise, Fabian Fothero as well, the world championship leader, coming from the middle of the first shot. He's going to slot into second place. Alexis Spargo's had a really good start. Fothero is going in wide. He's going hot in that first corner. Martin and Alexis Spargo sweep on through. Fothero was second, back to fourth. And what about this from Alexis Spargo? Stunning start from the man second in the championship. Fifth to second already. Alexis got away very, very well. He was on the outside of turn one. He was able to take advantage. Quattarara straight back through into this drop, and he knows he needs to get out in front as early as he can. And Pekka Banyaya already trying to build up a lead. Martin now just up behind Alexis Spargo. Then we have Jack Miller, who has to serve his one-leg penalty. And Marco Benteke back in sixth. Quattarara was second going into turn three, and now he's come out of it briefly in second. He must have been really aggressive at the Struven. He has lost second place back, though, to Alexis Spargo. That's Jorge Martin running a tight line right at the top of the circuit now. Mandevane, also Steckenbar, into turn nine now, into the bolt. Pekka back now is already nearly nine tenths of a second clear of the chasing pack as Betseki picks up Jack Miller going through the bolt. That's a successful move, so Betseki started P4, now back in P4 ahead of the Aussie. Just about to Click six gear here, nearing 280 kilometers now through Hogerheide. Then I'll bank it hard left through the ramshuk, still high speed, high lean angle through this fourth gear left hander. And then now coming into the Timur Chicane, as we saw pre race, there's been a fair amount of drama there uh, over the course of the years. Lap four then in the books, Pekka Banyai leads by four tenths of a second. Alexis Spargo is the man in second place. We're looking at him now from Fabio Quattara, who's right in striking distance now, the Aprilia man. Fastest rider on track though is Marco Benzeki in fourth position. The three leaders up ahead are all laughing here enough on the same lap time on a 133-0, but it was a 32-7 for Marco Benzeki in fourth position. He's pulled clear as Quattararo now attacks. Oh, he's down. down! Oh no, Fabio Quattararo's gone down! A rare mistake from the world champion. Since the opening Grand Prix of 2021, Fabio Quattararo has had one DNF in the last 27 races. What a collector's item that is. I can't believe my eyes. Fabio Quattararo, with the rarest of mistakes, has crashed here at the Shruben corner. He's picked up a late Spargo as well and really wrecked the hopes of victory here for the Aprilia man. He has been able to remount the factory Yamaha, but at turn number five, high drama indeed here in Assen. Fabio Quattararo, who was going for three consecutive wins on the Yamaha here in, Dutch, in the Dutch TT, he's made the biggest mistake of the season so far for him personally. Down at turn five, he's remounted. Well, that's game over for his victory hopes here in Holland. He's up into 14th position. He'll be boiling under that helmet, of course. He'll be raging with what's happened to Lacey Spargo, but he does still have the opportunity to claw back some points on Fabio Quattro. Here's how it looks from the rear of Pekka Wainaya up ahead. He came from a long way back, didn't he there, Fabio Quattararo? He got on the inside, but as he squeezed the brake on, he locked the front, down he went. Unfortunately, the innocent victim of that little melee was Alexis Barrow. You could see the uh, disappointment etched all over the face of Lynn Jarvis and the factory Yamaha crew. Yellow flags are out now again in sector one. See Alexis Spargo still circulating in 14th place. It's Frankie Morbidelli. Well, it's that's been a, also a disturbance. Well, what a horrible day it's been at turn five then for the Monster Energy Yamaha team because Fabio Quattararo was down there early on. Frankie Morbidelli was kind of a lot of lean angle there, quite a lot of speed, wasn't he? He turned in to turn five. You can just see there more dejection and frustration coming the way of Mordor Delhi. So at the moment we're on course for no points for the factory Yamaha team. As it stands at the moment, we're heading for a podium lockout for Ducati. We have Banyaya leading from Betzeki, who's keeping Banyaya well and truly in sight at the moment. The rookie doing a really good job in this Grand Prix. Here is Alessio Spargo now at the inside of his good friend, Alex Rins. That's 13th position. He's entered yeah, the pit. He's uh, slowed right up. He's down the, uh, the back straight. Oh, Somebody else has gone down, down. down. There's been another faller as well. So Fabio Quattararo is uh, calling it a day here after a rare mistake from him. Thankfully for Ducati fans, it's none of the top three. It's Darren Binder. So now, that was a big one. Wow, that is a very, very second-hand RNF Yamaha, to say the least. So three Yamahas have had a bad day. Now Steckenbar catches out the South African rookie. So we've only got Andrea Di Vizioso now on the factory, on the Yamaha that's currently involved in the Iwata factory. And he's outside the point as well further up ahead of him that brings him back into contention and maybe he can steal a point or two but it's not looking likely at the moment here's what's been going on then in the battle for fourth Maverick Vinales has taken it and there is why 
A little bit wide there for Brad Brindon. And Maverick Vinales spots the opportunity as he goes through turns three and four. So the solar Prilia man towards the front of this Grand Prix. Now up into four for Premier Class. Here's a look at the start once again. We're looking at Juan Mir. What are we going to take a look at here as he pulls into the grid? He almost makes contact there with Miguel Oliveira. Oh, yeah. Something drops off the Suzuki. It's, I think it's the wing. I think it's Miguel Oliveira's arrow, isn't it? Is he going to make contact as well to Lainey? He is. He makes contact with Luca Marini as well. Juan no wonder Marini dropped back. Juan Mir must feel like he's in a rugby scrum after the start of that. Oh, he's down. Oh, Quattro Quattro again. oh Fabio Quattararo has gone down again. Well, high drama again, Fabio Quattararo. Well, we thought it was unusual to see him crash once in a Grand Prix. But can you believe this now? He's crashed twice in the Dutch TT in 2022. He's really in pain as well. That was a big one. Was that a high side coming out Looked of it. the Struben? It is. It's a second crash in turn five for Fabio Quattararo. I don't think I've seen anything like this for quite some time. Then the reigning world champion, your current MotoGP world champion leader, Fabio Quattraro, on the way in, hitting a later Spyro a few laps to go, and on the way out of turn five. Oi. That's a big one. That's horrible. That's a savage one. A bucking Bronco that factory Yamaha turned into. We're looking now directly at Fabio Quattraro. He starts to lose the rear tyre, and then he just gets flicked once, twice, three times, he had that crash at turn five early on when trying to snatch second place right here from Alexis Bargu at the Struber. Then having gone back out of the circuit, as Lewis said, a futile task, really. He had no chance of scoring points in this Grand Prix. Then coming out of the Struber, a big, big high side for Fabio Quattraro. A little bit fortunate to walk away from that one, but it's the first blot on the coffee book for him so far in 2022. He'll see his world championship lead potentially slink, shrink to around 30 points. This is the horrible second crash for Quattraro. Oh, that was nasty. A proper headbutt onto the screen of that factory Yamaha. His day has done here in Holland. There will be no more Dutch delight for Quattraro after his brilliant dominant win here one year ago. For conditions, Jorge Martin has really been caught out by the race spots where they can see in the background. Jorge Martin was fourth at the start of this lap 18. He's already lost places to Binder and to Miller. Binder and Miller, slick tyres <laughs> on a wet surface. Those are them, two guys it? that you would put your mortgage on, wouldn't you, to be right in the heat of the battle. Looks like Vignard just got a slightly better turning through that sector on the factory at up This was where Miller was really Really, really good through Ramshuk. Can he get close enough to attack Vinyard on the brakes in the tip of chicane? He certainly can. He's gone for it. Is he going right. to go a little bit hot? He sadly has. So Miller briefly for what a second had third place here from Vinyard. And now Miller with that running in too hot. He looks like he's under. Well, he is on the big pressure here coming from Binder. Alexis Spargo has taken sixth place from Jorge Martin. So what looked like being a bad day for Alexis Spargo is getting better and better. What a rescue job by him. He's now in P6. P5 is not out of the question yet either. He did a 132.8 last time around. That was four tenths quicker than Brad Binder. He's got half a second to make up on this final lap. He's going to be very, very close, Alexis Spargo, to the South African in that final chicane. But with that moment for Jack Miller, that mistake into the chicane last time around, that leaves Maverick Vinales clear. He's just got a mistake-free final lap to go, and he will have finally his First podium finish in factory Aprilia colours. It would be a bit of a save for the Aprilia team in general, wouldn't it? If Alexis Barro can join him inside the top six. Banyai's lead at the front is a second and a half. Betzeki is clear of Maverick Vinales. He's got a one second advantage in his pocket. And Vinales at the moment looks safe in third position. The big question is, can Miller hold off Binder? And can they both hold off Alexis Barro? Banyaya has been the top man in this Aston Grand Prix, but it looks like the top gun will hold on for his first Aprilia podium. Here we come then, Pekka Bagnaya through Hogaheide at turn 13. Just three corners left there now for Pekka Bagnaya. As Ducati are going to get some Dutch delight here in Aston after the bitter disappointment of his crash out of victory contention seven days ago in the Saxon ring. A Dutch TT winner in 2022 is Pekka Bagnaya.
Marco Betts second and takes a career first, second place. Maverick Vinales comes over the line for a first Aprilia podium. And Alexis Spargo, with a sensational last lap, gets through on both Binder and Miller to rescue fourth after his collision with Fabio Quattrono very early on. And that was a big, big race for Alexis Spargo. Look at that big intake of breath from him. What a move this is. He's got Binder and Miller in front of him. <laughs> Two of the latest breakers in MotoGP. How close was that? How enthralling and thrilling was that last corner from Alexis Spargaro? Brad Binder was in the Miller Spargaro sandwich. Well, Alexis Spargaro comes over the line with a fourth place, which will feel like a win after his early race drama. Of course, Fabio Quattararo went down twice. Look at this. This was classic <laughs> last corner, last lap. Tim O'Shaquane action, wasn't it, in MotoGP here in Assen. Jack Miller came off the worst of it. He goes down uh, into sixth place. What a ride, though, by Alexis Bargro. Hi, I'm Will Christian, and thank you all so much for watching. I'm here to remind you to hit subscribe for all the latest Supercross news and highlights. And, of course, don't forget to sign up for Peacock Premium. That is now the new home for streaming for all live Supercross events all season long.